Everyone told me to play Dying Light. Oh man. Man, everybody's gonna hate this video. It will literally please no one. Unless you just like hearing me talk about stuff in general, and you're entertained regardless of how wrong you think I am. This video's for you. I've been interested in Dying Light for some time now. Many viewers have recommended it, and Cynic's review really made me want to try it. His video was quite fair, pointing out what he likes and doesn't like about Dying Light. I recommend you watch that video if you're looking for a detailed look at the game, because you're not going to get it here. This is not a review. I did not complete this game, I didn't even make it very far. This is part of my Everyone Told Me To Play series, which is just where I play stuff that's recommended, and I give my reaction to it. Sometimes it's a game that I go on to love, sometimes it's a game that I don't personally enjoy at all and I just want to turn it off, but I can definitely see what people like about it. I value that experience. I value playing games that aren't to my tastes because it helps me understand other people and it gives me better perspective. I loaded up Dying Light pretty excited, thinking, hey, if I like this, I'll get into Dying Light 2 and that could be some fun content for the channel. I watched the intro, I followed all the dialogue, and I was ready to embrace the world and story. After an hour of trying to find an FOV mod that finally made the game playable without making me motion sick, I started to explore the apartments. Wow, this is a long intro. Lots of walking around and talking to people. Pretty soon it became apparent that the characters are fairly uninteresting and I became worried that I wasn't going to have much to invest in as I spent the next hours in the world. Finally, I got outside, where I started experimenting with the parkour system, and I gotta say, I like it a lot. It's responsive, it's liberating, it's satisfying. Wee, I'm just jumping and climbing all over the place, it's great. I started exploring the map instead of following the objective, scavenging for materials. Dying Light, for a moment, triggered that prey part of my brain where I just want to look everywhere and find every possible item. But I couldn't do much with all the stuff I was finding, so after a while I got bored with exploring. Especially since so much of the map looked the same to me. Everything is brown, and it's just huts and panels everywhere. Not a very fun place to be. It's nice to see Dying Light 2 showing off some more variety to the visuals, because this was definitely a turnoff for me. I found a few crappy melee weapons, and they didn't feel good to use at all against the zombies, so I'd rather just avoid them, especially since weapons break. This is when I started to get worried. The combat didn't feel good, and it's easy to avoid zombies through parkour, so am I mostly going to be avoiding enemies? Despite my concerns, I didn't want to judge the game too early. I mean, we're just in the opening missions, it's going to get fun soon, right? Now, I generally find modern open world games to be slogs, but I try to interact with them the way they're supposed to be interacted with. Ghost of Tsushima has loads of side missions to explore, and so I did that. Cyberpunk has a bunch of side missions, so I did them. And they never left me feeling satisfied. I just felt like I was dicking around most of the time. This time, in Dying Light, I wasn't going to make that mistake. I'm going right for the meat of the experience. Main story objectives. I'm not looking to deliver Ethel's necklace to her grandson. I'm here to save the day and see some action while progressing the story. However, one after another, the objectives were just go over here and hit a switch. Or pick up this thing and go talk to a guy. Objectives were frequently found on the opposite side of the map, and there was no way to get there quickly. So large portions of my playtime were spent with empty running, just running from one part of the map to the other, not fighting anyone, jumping across rooftops. I get it, the parkour is cool, but a lot of the time I felt like that's all it was. It's not like we're in a magnificent GTA city where you don't mind driving for 5 minutes to reach the next objective, cause there's sights to see and a living world to interact with. One place in Dying Light feels like all the others, to me. Occasionally I'd get attacked by one of the crazy screaming zombies, I'd use some of my items, med kits if necessary, and they're replenished by crafting. Which... Uh, I really wasn't in the mood for. Yeah, it makes sense for the survival setting of the game. Doesn't mean I'm gonna find it fun, though. My tolerance for crafting is very limited, and Dying Light crosses that limit without a doubt. 
Even if I'm really enjoying a game up to a certain point, when I see a bunch of scavenging for different materials, I'm out. However, I love Factorio, a game that's basically all about crafting. So, explain that one to me. Once the nighttime mechanic was presented, things were looking up. It was an intense and stressful mission where I was trying my hardest to survive. That's what I'd been looking for. But after that first mission, I realized that night missions are optional, and you can just rest until morning and complete missions in the daytime. It just said that I get more XP for doing night missions, so no thanks. XP for what? I'm avoiding most of the combat anyway. I'm running all around this map doing the main objectives, and I'm bored, man. I'm bored. I played on stream, and viewers insisted that I gotta do the side missions. That's where the good stuff is. So I dedicated the rest of my time to side missions, where I ran across the map, hitting switches, and talking to people. Are you kidding me? I said earlier that I was worried about the characters feeling boring as the game went on, and I think I was right about that. The more I played, the more unlikable everyone became, and I just had to stop paying attention to whatever they said and focus on the missions. That's really to the game's detriment, because the missions I played were painfully uninteresting. I find the checkpoint system to be bizarre. If you die in the middle of a mission, and you go back to the spawn point and run back, the enemies you killed remain dead, so you can pretty much just beat your head against the wall over and over and bully your way through mindlessly. Little by little, my strategic planning degraded into dumb flailing and mashing because it felt like it didn't matter anyway. You can use this as kind of a makeshift fast travel too. Hit the objective point and then die so you can warp to the nearest spawn point. There is a penalty for dying, a deduction of your survival skill XP, but eh, so what? Even with multiple deaths per mission, my survival level is still my highest level, so who cares? And it's not like the game isn't challenging, it is. At times it can be really tough. I died plenty, I just didn't care. I was content to run around with mostly crap melee weapons, occasionally finding a decent one, and dying due to reckless play. There were some really high-level expensive weapons at the store, and even after 10 hours I couldn't afford one, unless I went around for another few hours just killing dumbass zombies, farming resources, and scavenging for cash, which at that point I was completely over, cause I don't enjoy fighting anyone, and with no HP bar over the enemy's heads, I really struggle to have any sense of how much damage I'm dealing. I don't know why they wouldn't include that. It looks like they've added health bars in Dying Light 2, so nice. I made it 10 hours into Dying Light. That's 5 hours more than I wanted to give it, but I stuck with it to see if I found more enjoyment. I simply didn't, because nothing about the game made me feel like I wanted to make it that far. Some of the people who were watching me play were telling me that the game is actually a lot of fun. I was just playing it in a boring way, to which I say, that's not on me. Not if it works. It's not my job to make your game fun. I'm happy lots of people do have fun with the game, I wouldn't want to take that away from anyone. But I really don't get this one, guys. Maybe 200 hour open world games full of scavenging and crafting and clunky melee combat are simply games that shouldn't be recommended to me. When I personally dislike something this much, it becomes impossible for me to judge its objective quality. After a while I just had to turn Dying Light off, and I won't be coming back to it. I appreciate the recommendation, I do, I'm glad people want me to try out games they love and talk about them, and I hope my displeasure with the game was at least amusing to some people out there. I'm done though. But you only played it for 10 hours. What? You only played it for 10 hours. You didn't give it a chance. What world do you live in where playing something for 10 hours means you didn't give it a chance? This game has hundreds of hours of gameplay. You can judge it by just 10 hours. Get out. Get the fuck out. No, I'm not. Get what? out. Get out. Get out of my room. Get the fuck out. Fuck. How'd you even get in my room anyway? Coming in here telling me I gotta play games for more than 10 hours before I know if I like it or not. Ridiculous. Allow me to take this moment to officially state that I am not a member of the It Gets Better Club. 
I'm not talking about the organization that helps bullied gay kids. I'm talking about the people who defend some games, usually open world RPGs, by saying it gets better after 40 hours or some crap like that. No, I don't have time for that. I've got two jobs, hobbies, a social life. I'm not going to take a game that I haven't enjoyed in the slightest for 10 hours and play it for another 20 or 30 hours just for the chance that I might like it a little more. You can take that shit and put it outside with a bell, where it's cold and raining. I'm not interested. I'm not saying it's an illegitimate way to make your game. I know it has its audience, but it's not for me. And that's why this video isn't a review. It's not fair to call this a review. I'm way too biased to talk sensibly about this game. This is more like how you would hear me talk about it if we were talking at a bar or something. So no, I did not like the game. I must admit, it was a shame. I'm rhyming now, it seems to be. Rhyming for reasons I do not see. Out the window Mayo's sanity went. Like and subscribe for more content.